what if cooking could actually save the planet? I'm here with a team who thinks it can. This stovetop is pin drop silent and actually feels like a video game. With magnetic knobs that are unmatched and precise temperature control. I never thought I'd be so excited about knobs. That replace every kitchen appliance in your home. This stovetop turned me into a chef. We just put a f***ing turkey in there. But somehow they're also solving the grid crisis? I'm Sam Tomiko, founder and CEO at Impulse. Impulse builds home appliances with integrated energy storage. I've always been a really big fan of cooking. Once I started hosting friends over at my place for like barbecues, made pizza, and I realized that there was just actually this huge opportunity to improve the space, the engineering me got really excited about that. We trust our kitchens, but what if the appliances we use daily are silently harming us? What if the power runs out? And how do we combat the growing struggles to meet the demands of power generation? Can Impulse Labs really solve all of these problems with just a stovetop? Keep watching to see the impressive tech powering the system and how it will impact your daily life. This is Hardware Nation. We started this company for a very simple reason. The appliance industry honestly hasn't changed in like 50 years. And where people think the benchmark is today is gas stoves. And that conveys luxury, performance, and also just an awesome user experience of direct control of the flame. And for that reason, it's actually the gas stove that is the key factor that keeps many homes on natural gas, period. Depending on where you live in the United States, like your natural gas could be a number of different things. It could have a number of different chemicals in there. There's been studies saying there's high benzene concentration in certain areas. These things can be at best irritants and at worst carcinogens. In some sense, some of these combustion products are actually heavier than air and they may not actually leave your house. Those just recirculate back into the kitchen like they're just a filter. And the gas industry knew this. At the same time, your other options might be electric. You may actually be in a house like mine in San Francisco where maybe you only have 100 amps or 125 amps of, of service. Adding an electric vehicle charger would be 60 amps, but an induction stove would also be 60 amps. You might not have enough space for even one additional major appliance to go electric. Obviously, induction stoves exist and are decent in terms of user experience, but the user experience there is still kind of similar to turning a dimmer switch. You don't exactly get the level of control, and that's honestly where Impulse comes in. We're able to actually redefine the cooking experience from these legacy technologies, bring it to the actual future where we have direct control, not just of the power output, but of the temperature of the user experience of the end device. And that makes it so much better than what the existing market is offering. So what are we looking at here? This is the Impulse cooktop. It is an induction stove, an integrated battery, but there's a couple of features that kind of set it apart. It's got a very obvious massive screen here. That was really important because we're doing a lot of new stuff and we have to make sure it's really clear. So we've got these magnetic knobs here. So you actually can lift them up and you can clean oh, underneath. Wow. It's incredible. Wow. We actually went from the ground up and developed something with magnetic encoder technology. You're actually able to get direct feedback that I've actually clicked or turned the stove on. Wow, I, I never thought I'd be so excited about knobs. This device can replace a number of tabletop devices that you would otherwise have. Like you can replace your rice cooker, you can replace your sous vide, you can replace your instant pot. We're doing a lot of stuff that it, most stoves can't do. So your traditional cooktop has like low, medium, high. You have no idea what those mean. Honestly, people are used to their ovens. So we use the same abstraction that ovens are successful yeah. with, which is literally degrees. And I can say, hey, let's set this thing to 250. It's like setting your oven to 250, except it's the inside of the pan. It's the kind of stuff that you need, but you don't know or you don't realize until it's right in front of you. How crispy do you like your egg? I, I like it a little brown, yeah. Okay, so we'll go to 315 or something like that. We're gonna be seeing the infamous Sam egg happening in action. And by the way, this pan is already hot. So like I'm just able oh, yeah, to, the butter is all ready to go. I get made fun of for all my egg cracks on video. That one turned out great. Oh yeah, Maybe. perfect egg crack. People can judge I'll give, it, I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. While we're doing that, I actually can steam the top of the egg without needing to add additional water. And I don't have to worry about the bottom burning because it's not gonna go above 315 degrees. Then you can look at something like this. And in this case, that is perfect. Oh, that's perfect. Comes right off. Comes right off. There's like no residue. And you can see you made a perfect egg. You can have the perfect egg that you'd like 100% of the time. I mean, this egg looks phenomenal. You know, we, we've tried making eggs. We can make a bunch of other stuff. What if we made something that you shouldn't make at home? 
And please don't try this at home, by the way. <laughs> don't tell the CPSC. Shh. Despite the fact that there's all these new and exciting and awesome use cases coming online, our infrastructure is old and decrepit and blocked by what I would describe as not in my backyard types in major cities. NIMBY has made it increasingly difficult to do any sort of major disruptive work to our energy systems, including our electrical systems. This is everything from upgrading transformers on your street to building transmission lines through rural areas. There's always someone who will try to veto it. It's up to decentralized solutions to actually solve this problem. The real secret plan is to deploy batteries in every home in America. And the best way to do that is to put them inside the devices that we're already connecting to the grid, major home appliances. And many of these devices become much better if they have a battery inside them. We can make fundamentally more capable appliances with better experiences for the end user because we put a battery inside them. So hopefully we sell a lot of those. But once we sell a lot of those, they're then in everyone's house. And when they're in everyone's house, we've actually transformed the grid. And this is super exciting because this basically forms the basis of a decentralized upgrade to the entire electric grid because you're now deploying batteries right where they're needed most. This is our lab. We get units back from our factories overseas. We integrate them with the batteries. We run them through a battery of tests as well. If you need to make small tweaks to a circuit board, you look under a microscope because a lot of the parts are pretty small. We've got some soldering stations. We've got inspection stations. We've got oscilloscopes. You can see what's going on over time with circuits, which is really cool. So what are we looking at here, Sam? This is a three kilowatt hour battery and it's a it's LFP. So LFP is a, a different type of battery technology than what's in your phone. This battery gives us an additional about 15, 16,000 watts of power above what the wall can supply. It's pretty cool that, you know, you have this, uh, you know, cool cooktop in the kitchen, but it also helps you power the rest of your house. I, I saw the books over there. You had like some books. Yeah, some they're the compliance book. You have to design this thing with the compliance in the loop. Oh, you can't just make your own stuff and, and sell it to people? You know? Oh, some tech guy wants <laughs> to make some stuff. Like, you're gonna get, I, I don't know if cancel culture still exists, but it exists there. <laughs> What does it actually cost? It's currently $6,000. It's actually at the higher end of the induction cooktop market, but that's still within realm of some of the premium brands. And then additionally, there's a 30% tax credit because it's got a battery in there. Yeah, I'm in that boat. You've convinced me, I want one. But seriously, Sam, should we tell them what we're doing? We're going to deep fry a turkey. What, what are we naming this turkey, Sam? This, this is a special turkey. We gotta give it a name. You gotta give it Doug. a name. All right, Doug, this is, it looks like a duck. <laughs> all right, so what are we doing with Doug? We actually have to get the oil up to temperature. Okay. So I'm just gonna go all the way to max power. So we put 10,000 watts in here. It knows that the bottom layer of the oil is getting really hot. How does it know that? Because How? it's got really good temperature sensing through the, the sensor. It knows we're doing something that we shouldn't be doing. So it's making sure that Doug is well cooked. <laughs> so we ready to put the turkey in? Let's put the turkey on. All right. Give me the stick. <laughs> Oh. So what we want to do, like that. All right, Doug, let's go. All right, whoa. <laughs> of course we're about to die. Oh no. The turkey's got a lot of water in it. And you need to kind of make sure that the water doesn't cause the oil to boil over. And now it's frying. Doug is drowning. <laughs> Holy shit, that was crazy. We just put a turkey in there. This thing will not catch on fire under any circumstances. The oil can't ignite, but also it won't get to a spot where like this oil would start smoking or things like that. It's able to manage this dynamically in real time and keep everything safe. And, and it's not leaking anywhere yeah. inside here yeah. either. We actually had to do a ton of work on sealing this. One is it's sealed and there's a silicone diaphragm keeping it, you know, if you spill on it, it's fine. But we actually tested it with that removed. Okay. There's actually a drain path through the induction coil all the way out to the bottom, out between where the battery and the cooktop are. So they've got a few layers of we safety. We have a few layers of safety here just for this purpose. That's all cool and all, Sam, but I'm still in shock that this turkey that we're deep frying right now is all under control in the office space. Nothing was set on fire. And Am not I gonna lie, I, I was a little scared, but you've won me over. Yeah, we'll see, for now. For now. <laughs> You know, Doug is in there, he's getting deep fried, and uh, yeah, I think we're gonna be able to have a turkey in an hour. So now we can just let this go for the next hour until it's ready. I mean, thank God, because I'm, I'm really hungry. When someone goes and builds a fancy home from scratch, one of the biggest things they insist on with their fancy kitchen 
is that they have a gas stove. So you're not gonna motivate someone to switch from their gas stove, which they probably spent a pretty penny on when they remodeled their kitchen, by threatening them, by scaring them, by fear-mongering about gas. The way you get people to change their minds is to make a better product and have them try it. Because the future is electric and it's powered by batteries. We've watched this happen in the car industry over the past decade or so. For some reason, it has not yet hit the appliance industry in the same way. So when we created Impulse, we realized that the normal plug in your wall is not enough power to make awesome devices that are next generation performance. The only way we could do that would be to put a battery inside. And what that battery does is it lets us boost the peak power of the device, even though the average power can only come through trickle charging that battery over a longer period of time. We can actually make a device that is fundamentally better than anything else in the market with this technology. About an hour later, we're done. Turkey's actually been frying in temperature control mode since we got it up to temperature. It's definitely looking really good. So let's- You're sure it's fully cooked though? It's, You're not trying to kill me. Just look into the boiling oil, you know, stare into its glory. Yeah. It looks pretty cooked. Looks pretty cooked, right? Yep. Now we gotta get this thing out. Three, two, one, we're gonna just lift it up. Yep. And we're gonna wait for it to drain out a little bit. Looks phenomenal. Oh, it's cooked. What do you all think? It's good? Do you even lift? <laughs> Only turkeys. Just like that, the turkey's all done? I mean, this thing looks mouth-watering. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is like the first time we've done this properly on this thing, so like, you're witnessing. We witness history. Normally, it's an outdoor adventure in order to cook a turkey. And you know, the Impulse cooktop made it seem like it was little to no work. I mean, we probably did 10% work, and the Impulse cooktop did 90% of it. And you know, here we've got a turkey ready for dinner. Uh, so I think it's time to eat this thing. Cool, shall we? Yeah. We're gonna have dinner. The cooktop is just the beginning. We have started to sign up significant external OEM partners that will integrate this technology into their own co-branded products with us. So these devices will be powered by Impulse. That gets us substantial reach. Like we'll be in every appliance showroom in the United States. The key idea is that appliances are not just consumers of energy. They can choose when to use it and when to help deploy it as part of a distributed energy network on the grid. <laughs> Unlike an SF Tech party. Right, am I Carmen? Yes. This right. is better than an SF Tech party. <laughs> With Impulse Labs, I don't just see a stove. I see a design philosophy. I see a company trying to rewrite how we live one household at a time. Yeah, Cooking has always brought people together, but now it just might bring us closer to a cleaner and safer future. Good job, everybody. That was awesome, thanks all. If this is what the next chapter of home energy looks like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs>